Hey y'all, welcome to my channel. If you guys are new, my name is Cass. I talk all about DIY content creation to enhance your brand, business, or just create better content in general, you guys. And today we're talking all about the best camera settings, shooting, and manual, all that good stuff. Um, just for getting started in film, videography, YouTube, photography, whatever. Um, they all kind of are on the same playing field, so that's what we're gonna talk about. All right, so the first thing I wanna kinda go over is just the genu general, <laughs> is the general manual mode shooting settings. If you guys have looked up anything about photography, you've probably already heard of these. If not, then I'm gonna try to break it down for you as simplistic as possible. It took me a while to really grasp the concept of how these three things played together when it came to photography and film um, but I've kind of figured it out now and I'm able to use it to my advantage to make sure whenever I'm shooting wherever I'm shooting I'm getting the best quality image possible so the first thing is the aperture the f-stop so a to shoot on manual you want to make sure this top part of your camera here or whatever wherever your settings option is on canon it's going to be this little tiny thing on the top is on the m that means you are shooting on manual that means you have total control over the camera settings the camera's not going to tell you what to do you're going to tell the camera what to do so whenever you're on your photo settings and you are on manual on the Canon camera, you press a little Q icon to now control it. Some of the cameras are touch screen, so you can just touch and decide. Um, but you'll see a number, you'll see something that says F with a number next to it. So that's the aperture, and this number here is the F stop. So aperture is basically how much light you are letting into the camera. So the smaller the F stop number, so right now this camera, for example, is at F5.0, that's not really letting in too, too much light. Um, if you were at something like F1, point four then you're letting in a lot of light um five five points oh is not too bad but as you kind of bring it up you're letting in less light now why would you want to let in less light right um so basically the smaller the number of the f-stops the less light you're letting in but the more out of focus background that you're going to get so when you guys see those photos with the blurry out of focus boca gorgeous smooth looking background they have the lowest f-stop possible that's why in my um beginner photographer kit video you see i mentioned the 50 millimeter canon lens as a good beginner photographer lens if you want to shoot portraits because that is an f 1.4 um aperture f-stop and that's really excellent because i mean you're going to get a super crispy out of focus background you're going to be able to let in a lot of light and get a beautiful photo so it's the other way around if you want to actually show more of the background then you would want to have a larger f-stop but it will let in a little less light so you can supplement that with your shutter speed so the next thing i want to talk about you guys is shutter speed this kind of controls the motion blur especially in a photo so when you see a photo of like a waterfall and it looks really smooth and silky that's a slow shutter speed so it kind of looks like it's moving in slow motion so that's how you can kind of remember a slow shutter speed a slow shutter speed is going to have a smaller number so it's going to be like a fraction so a slow shutter Shutter speed would be like it's right next to the f-stop so it might be like 1 over 15 1 over 6 I mean you could get super super slow and that's gonna smooth it out and that's gonna let in more light the smaller the shutter speed so if you do open up your f-stop because you want to see more of the background then you may have to supplement it by changing up your shutter speed and then the other way around the faster the shutter speed the higher the one one thousandth of a second like the higher that fraction is the more detail it's going to capture so it would look like the object the person is moving a bit faster so you get less of the motion blur as a lot more crispy but that does take away more of the light so you may have to supplement that by doing a shorter a smaller f-stop and now we're going to talk about one more thing the iso so the iso is kind of like artificial light so it's light that's not actually there that the camera is kind of providing for you depending on what kind of camera you have they can go up to crazy numbers of ISO, but the only downside of using the artificial light, the higher your ISO number, the more that your photo will look grainy. So to access the ISO, you just click the little ISO button and it will take you into the ISO. Um, but you want to try to shoot with the smallest ISO possible. So I always set my f-stop first, decide how out of focus I want my background to be. Then I set my shutter speed to try to get like the perfect 
lighting situation and then I go into my ISO and I try to make it as small as possible with still getting a good amount of light so I don't have too much grain in my photo or video so you definitely want to have the smallest number ISO you possibly can unless you're trying to go for a more grainy artificial light looking look and then you can bump up that ISO and bring in more light but those three things you guys the aperture the shutter speed and the ISO all work together to create your photos so it's pretty simple because you only have to remember three things but you do have to kind of remember how they work together how they correspond and how they can help you in the moment just quick thinking on your feet on when it comes to taking the best possible photos one technique i did use if there's a certain aperture that you just like in general then just stick with that aperture and then i just twist this wheel here to sh change my shutter speed at the top of the camera and so all i do throughout a photo shoot is worry about changing my shutter speed and i try to keep my iso as low as possible sometimes i'll just keep it on auto um just because if auto is working out for me fine um but other than that then you just have to focus on turning the wheel changing the shutter speed which is also kind of like the exposure so that's just kind of a cheat that you can do if you're like i definitely want all out of focus background great just get on the lowest aperture change up your shutter speed so on the canon camera if you go to menu there's something called picture style so i actually don't use the standard picture style that is set on the canon there's a bunch of different ones there's like monochrome standard auto all these different ones and they're great canon is great with like understanding and recognizing color and all that good stuff so you can definitely use that i actually downloaded my own picture style because i wanted my photos um i wanted my photo and video to come out more raw so that i could color grade it later afterwards so in picture style i don't i download something called cine style um so i just downloaded it online i think i found a video so i'll link the video below if you want to download cine style onto your canon camera um but i really love it because it kind of preserves all the detail and then i can go in and bring back in the color and the saturation however i want um when i go back in color grades that's kind of one thing and um, then i do a bit differently um, that I really really like to do since these camera the 70 D's can't shoot raw um, so that's another option if you do have a camera that can shoot raw then you can just shoot raw you don't have to actually download a raw file looking thing so last thing when it comes to filming videography YouTube videos there's kind of two things you'd have to also keep in mind when it comes to filming and that is a your frame rate when it comes to your frame rate if you're in um, video mode on your camera and you click that Q, you should see something on the side that says like maybe 1920 24 280 60 like it says all these numbers and under it it says like all i or ip that is your frame rate so the frame rate is basically how many frames per second your camera is taking photos so if you guys don't know a video is just a bunch of photos so it's how many photos per second is this camera taking so why would you want to use what at which time so my camera provides 24 frames per second and 60 frames per second and i kind of did talk about this in my film and edit on iphone video and the difference between those but we're just going to focus on 24 and 60 so 24 you guys is what like a film is shot in so that's just standard motion regular fluid human motion if you're just shooting a regular youtube video any of that good stuff you just want to shoot at 24 frames per second you're good to go now when you would want to use 60 frames per second is if you're going to go make something slow motion because if you try to make something 24 frames per second in slow motion it's going to be kind of choppy because there's not as much frames there but if you use 60 frames per second the slow mo is going to be a lot smoother because it has more frames to work with so 24 frames per second if you're shooting just like a scene for a film if you're shooting a youtube video if you're just shooting something that's going to be regular motion like this i'm shooting in 24 frames but if you know you're going to go in and maybe slow something down if you're walking with someone and you want that to be a smooth shot um then you'd want to shoot it in 60 frames per second so that it's smooth when you slow it down okay okay all right y'all so last thing when it comes to filming there is a rule of thumb with the shutter speed so the shutter speed when you're shooting is supposed to be twice your frame rate so whenever i'm shooting right now on this camera i'm shooting at 24 frames per second so my shutter speed is at 50 which is about um twice 24 we don't have like the exact number um but you want your shutter speed to be twice that number so if you're shooting at 60 frames per second you want to use 120 shutter speed so in that case then you would play around with your aperture and your ISO to get the lighting situation that you desire but that's kind of the rule of thumb with shutter speed and 
filming. All right, you guys, so those are the manual camera settings, how to shoot in manual, how to determine the best camera settings to shoot with, depending on what you are shooting, you guys. But I definitely hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned um, some just basics about photography and filmmaking and that you guys can get behind the camera, play around. Um, definitely subscribe to join the Work That Fam. Thumbs up to support my channel, you guys. Check out some of my other DIY photo shoot videos. Yeah, gal, it's out. It's time for me to eat.